Welcome to Economics and You. I am your host, Mr. Samuelson. Last time we were together, we looked at consumerism. We broke down the rights and responsibilities of consumers. Today, we are going to be looking at Americans and credit. We live in a debt economy. Our economy functions largely because of our ability to go into debt. The American economy is uh, one in which people are borrowing enormous amounts of money every year. And this isn't just individuals. It's not just you and me and our parents. It's groups of people. Companies borrow money, either to get started or to make payroll in a difficult time. And governments, governments also go into debt. We all are able to function because of our ability to do this. And if we were not able to run debts, then we would not be able to manage difficult times. Credit is money that you receive to make a purchase with the promise to pay it back. This is the largest form of going into debt. It's when you establish credit. You borrow that money and you promise to pay it back. But you don't just pay back that money. See, the money that you buy borrow is called principal. That's the money that is loaned to you. But in addition, you're going to be paying somebody for them giving you this money. And that payment is called interest. So you might uh, borrow, as this graph suggests, uh, $300,000 to buy yourself a very nice house, but then you're also going to pay 5% interest per year on that. That's going to add up for you quite a bit. Now, installment debt is how you pay back those large loans. For large purposes of durable goods, these are the things that you buy and they last. They're not single-use type items. They're meant to exist in your home for a long time. Uh, people commonly use installment debt. Examples of these types of durable products are cars and home appliances like dishwashers and refrigerators and stoves. Uh, people frequently will go into debt and make installment payments to pay uh, back those loans. Now, the amount of money that you're paying is typically determined by the duration of the debt. The longer you hold that debt, the more you're going to pay. If you buy a $10,000 car and you agree to pay back that $10,000 within two years, you won't be paying as much in interest. But if it's a seven-year car loan, you'll be paying a lot of interest over time. Now, a home mortgage is the largest form of installment debt that most people face. If and when you buy a home, chances are you will not pay for that home with cash. You will have to borrow money in order to afford that home. Um, the homeowners who buy a home in this way typically agree to an installment payment system which will last either 15 or 30 years. If you pay it back in thir uh, 15 years, you're paying much less in interest. If you're paying back over 30 years, your installments are less. So you have to pay less out of your pocket every month, but more over the long term. So why would people use credit? Well, people buy with credit when they don't want to wait until they've saved enough money. They want to have the item now rather than later. And if you're willing to pay more money over time for the pleasure or convenience or ha of having an item now, it makes sense to do this. This is how people in their 20s and 30s can afford to own their own home, not because they've saved up enough money to uh, do that already, but because they know that 30 years down the line, they will have paid for their house, and over those 30 years, they will have been able to live in it as well. So the costs and benefits. The greatest cost of borrowing is the interest, which is added to the principal. If we're only paying back the principal, 
everybody would buy on credit all the time because you've got this incredible power to use now and pay later. But the interest is what gets you because that interest is money that is just going out the door for the convenience of having your product now. Now, when used well and you keep your debt level manageable, credit is a wonderful thing. It allows you to significantly improve your lifestyle. You can drive a better car. You can live in a nicer house. But you have to understand that this uh, level of debt needs to be managed. Your monthly payments need to be manageable. And you need to make sure you've got a cushion in place in case you lose a job. So a good credit checklist to think through before you purchase any item uh, includes these five points. One, can I wait until later to purchase this item? Is it something that I really need or would like to have now? Or is it something that I can wait a little bit later for, such as a new car versus a used car? Two, if I pay cash, what would I be giving up in return? This is your opportunity costs. Certain things cannot be purchased with credit. Certain things can. If you choose to purchase something that could be bought with credit, with cash, understand that you're giving up these other items which are cash-only purchases. Three, if I use credit, will my satisfaction be greater than my interest payments? Keep in mind, we use credit for the convenience and pleasure of having an item now. But if it doesn't bring that much convenience or that much pleasure, but it does carry a high interest rate, you should avoid it. The fourth bullet. Am I getting the lowest possible interest rate? The interest rate matters. The difference between borrowing for five years with a 5% interest rate versus a 10% interest rate can be many hundreds or even thousands of dollars depending on the item you're buying. You want to make sure to pay attention to that interest rate and get it as low as possible. And then finally, five, can I afford to use credit? You want to make sure you're managing your debt levels. You want to make sure that you are not putting too many things on your credit cards because that can very much impact your standard of living going forward. If you are overspending, you are extending your credit too much, that can all have serious negative consequences for you down the line. Next time, we're going to be looking at sources of loans and credit. Where will you get this money from? And what do you need to look out for when you're looking for credit? Thank you for joining me today. This has been Economics and You. Farewell.